Coach, this will be five times in a row that you've played against them, played against that defense. What what are maybe some of the characteristics they have that you see on film from from carryover? Yeah, fast, physical, um, disruptive. It's always tough going to, going against them. Like you said, it'd be 50 years straight going against these guys. So we know each other very well. So it's going to be a physical game, and then you know we know it's always going to be tough in the trenches. You've had some pretty good performances against them in the past. Do you relish the challenge of going up against one of the better defenses in the league like that? Yeah, you always, um, you know, look forward to a big challenge, especially a uh, defense like that. They've been good and consistent with the same guys for however long we've been playing them, and um, you know, it's always uh, it's always good to go against uh, a great defense like them, and um, it, it'll be a challenge come Monday. Stuff to say. He said, you know, first of all, I can't believe I'm almost as big as this guy is. We're about the same size. He said, I might be able to run faster, but he's, his vertical's better. But just up against a guy like that who's been in the league so many years, um, you know, what a challenge does he always pose? Yeah, he's a Hall of Fame player. Um, you know, he's disruptive. He can take over a game at any point of the game. So you got to make sure we you know, take account of him on each and every play and each and every snap. It's the type of player he is. He's been, that's how he's been since he's been in the league. And um, we actually train at the same. Um, training facility, so I see him often in the off season. But you know, there's going to be a challenge going going up against him. A lot of backs put up some big numbers last weekend. You you sense the running game is getting a little more fashionable in the NFL again. All of a sudden, um, it's good you know to have a running game, guys uh, making big plays. I didn't, but you know, it's good to uh, you know you know see the guys getting yards and making big plays and you know help, helping their teams out. And hopefully it keeps going because you know we don't get much love. But hopefully that. Stops sometime soon. Well, you say you didn't have a good game. What, what didn't you like about your game? Um, I feel like I could have played better. A lot of plays I, you know, you, you want back, and um, you know, you just gotta, you know, get over it and you know, work on those things and work on work to improve um, during the week, and you know, just not let it, not let it happen again. Just grow and let it help you and feel you for the next game. You, you've you always been as, you, as you're in the middle of a game. Yourself and the offensive line starting to take control and gain momentum in a game, or is that just big plays happen and that's what it is? Um, yeah, anytime you're able to control the line of scrimmage and, you know, keep pushing piles forward and keep gaining yards and, you know, we having um, efficiency in the rain game, you know, you, you, you all can feel it and you know that, um, you know, everything's working, we're clicking. So, um, yeah, when that happens, it's a great feeling. Coach Rebo, I said that, you know, looking back on the Giants game, there was a lot of meat left on the bone. You know, when you hear that, like, how do you process that, and, and what's your response to it? Like, what the, what does that mean to you? No, yeah, he was right. I mean, it was a lot, a lot left on the bone, a lot of plays that you know we could have got more out of. I could have got more out of, and um, you know, taking heavy emphasis on that this week, just so you know, when that time comes, to take advantage, take advantage of those plays when they're there. And you got to make those plays, you know, because in this league, you know, it can be there, and then next thing you know, it closes. So just taking advantage of those plays and get the most out of the play as well. Well, you say that you could have gotten more out of them personally. Yeah. Is there an example, or, or what do you mean by that? Like uh, on the um, the Wildcat play when I uh, just looked the ball in and you know get vertical, and there was one run I had that I could have you know stayed vertical and tried to set up a block, but you know, just get up on that safety more quicker and try to make a home run. And flows in, in, in any game when you guys go flat like you did at the beginning of the second half. Mm -hmm. What's your process there? Do you say something to the guys? Are you just looking to stay the course? Is there any acknowledgement that like, hey, things have changed for us and we need to change it back? Yeah, just as an offense, you just gotta, you know, get something going. In my mindset, I got, I got, I got to make something happen. I'm trying to be a playmaker for this team, and that's, you know, what I, what I always think. Anytime, you know, we're not, you know, going the way we we need to, just try to make sure everybody stays in it, and then do my part by making the play. Derek, it's only week two, but do you guys, as a team, go into this week saying? You know, our backs are against the wall. We can't go 0-2, anything like that. We're not getting too overwhelmed um, about, uh, about about week one. All we can do is control what we control and uh, come out here until Monday comes and uh, get better get better as um, the week goes on and go out there and try to win a game on, on Monday. Um, you know, that's week one. In this game, you get another opportunity, and that's all you can hope for. You've always been a real self-critical guy, Derek. Do you think, you know, coming back for the first game this season, any chance that, you know, maybe you kind of let expectations get to yourself at all? Maybe, maybe you're a little bit more impatient than you than you usually are. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm all, I'm my worst critic, if, if 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 anything. So yeah, I always felt like I could have been better, and um, you know, just 
let the game come to me it's, instead of just trying to get too overwhelmed, trying to make that big play each and every play and just go out there and play and um, do what I do. So. Spotlight on you guys. Anything different in the air than than all the other Sunday games? I'm just ready to play. I mean, it's been been a long week. Week still going on, so and the game is at night, so I'm just just ready to play and um, be excited when that time comes. What do you think Last Daquan fight. might add to their the middle of their line there? Uh, uh yeah, da Daquan. He's a uh, he's a penetrator, uh, big stout dude. So I mean, it'd be fun to to, uh, to go against him. I haven't gone against him since he's been away, so. I guess keys, you don't want to be too predictable on offense, especially on first downs. But first down is usually a time that you can take a chance, maybe catch a defense off guard with an explosive play down the field. How do you balance or try to balance, you know, the, the safe four to five yards you might get with Derek on first down versus taking a shot? Yeah. You know, we, um, we do a good job within the course of the game trying to keep track of where we're at from a percentage standpoint, you know, a run pass uh, ratio standpoint. Also, you go into a game like that with a team that has a, a history of exotic pressures on third down and so on. Uh, and so you, you kind of have an intentionality of trying to stay in third and manageable. That way you're not putting yourself back there waiting for long routes to develop on third down. Uh, and so I think it would be a, a game by game uh, situation. You know, certainly in that game, early in the game, we were running the ball, you know, four or five yards a pop on first down. It kind of helped us stay into a rhythm, stay into some of those third and shorters. Obviously, we didn't do a good enough job of converting the third and shorts, but that all plays into the process. And then it, it also set up you know, some play passes on first down later in the game that we had some success. Is third and manageable straight out the goal, or, or is there an allowance for first down on first down or second down? Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, third and manageable is, is the preference uh, if you're not taking those shots on first and second down. And so there's, there's a give and take there. Uh, ultimately, the goal is to get first downs, whether it's on first, second, or third down, uh, to continue drives. But, uh, you know, you go into a game like that, and you certainly want to try to limit the exposure on third and extra long. Todd, run the play to uh, Chief that you guys had on third down. Been a lot of talk about that. What what needed to happen better for that play to succeed? A better play call. That was a bad call. I take full responsibility for that call. Um, you know, played a, a percentage off of what we had seen uh, from that defense in short yardage. Um, you know, obviously had a little miscue earlier in the game on, on short yardage and, and got a little too aggressive uh, with that call. Should have got something downhill, and that's that's on me. Coach Rabel has said something to the extent of, you guys don't take the philosophy of, excuse me, philosophy of, oh, we have to get this guy going. But when you have playmakers like Burks, like Woods, don't you think like that's something that, that you want to do? Hey, let me get them involved, get them checked in early, so that way we, we have them full go for the game? Yeah, we uh, we do a you know quite extensive uh, kind of evaluation of the game plan uh, as a staff to make sure that we have some things for guys uh, you know particularly early in the game and I think you saw some different guys getting touches early in the game um, you know and uh, one of the things that I think we did well is we started faster that was a point of emphasis and we were able to uh, you know get a touchdown on the opening drive by getting the ball to a couple of different guys including Traylon and some other people so. Uh, there's certainly an element of that to try to get guys going. Uh, you want to balance that without trying to force anything, you know, and, and that's uh, always, you know, part of the ebb and flow of the game. But, yeah, I, I think there's some validity to trying to get guys going early. Todd, generally speaking, when you guys have um, an offensive philosophy that everyone knows and that won't change kind of regardless of the personnel you guys have on the field, what's maybe – what do you have to do kind of on a week to week basis to make sure that you're keeping the defense on its toes? Yeah, we got to look for those counter punches, you know, and, and that's something that I felt, um, you know, was helped us generate some of those play pass productions. We had a couple explosives in the play pass off of common run formations, uh, things like that. And then also you have to have some interchangeable parts. You have to have guys that can go in there and, and do the job of maybe somebody who gets most of those reps, uh, you know, early in the season, and you got to kind of do it out of a different personnel grouping. So, um, you know, first game, you, you develop a, a couple of tendencies, uh, and then you got to try to find those counter punches to those tendencies. The O-line as far as a protection standpoint in week one, and maybe what's the challenge 
uh, here in week two against a team that had seven sides. Well, thank you for asking, Jim. I thought we protected well. I thought I thought uh, I thought we you know did a nice job of, of setting a firm pocket for Ryan inside. He was able to step up in the pocket, uh, you know, and get through a couple of progressions. Um, you know, I, we ended up with the one statistical sack that was on a, a keeper that that Ryan scrambled, but um, you know that that was uh, the only blemish on otherwise pretty good protection day. Yeah, how encouraged were you by Ryan Tannehill in that season opener? Yeah, I thought he saw the game well. You know, we were talking on the sideline, and, and he was diagnosing defense as well, and uh, particularly for a defensive scheme like that and the unknowns of the opener, you know, he was seeing things and indicators well, and so that process was good. Again, we just need to convert more on third down so we can keep those drives alive and give more opportunities for those first down play passes or, you know, the counter punches that we talked about, and that's uh, – you know, that's obviously the goal this week. How much big is a challenge from a protective standpoint against Buffalo uh, when, based on what, what you saw from them last week? Yeah, that's the fun of the NFL, right? Every week's a, a different challenge. Last week it was a little bit more scheme and figuring out how you're going to block things up. And this week it's about matchups and, and knowing our opponent. So we've got to dive into understanding who we're blocking, right, and having, uh, you know, a, a protection plan uh, for some of those edge rushers and then, you know, uh, make sure we're – doing everything we can to help those guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. You talked about getting guys going and all. Woods and Westbrook each caught a ball early and then mm -hmm. kind of disappeared from the pass game. And then Hooper was targeted really late in the game. Uh, what do you have to do to kind of spread things around, or, or are you just trying to play the hot hand and whoever's open there? Yeah, you know, I think I think that there's a, a little bit of um, misnomer to the number of targets. Just because they weren't targeted early doesn't mean they weren't first in the progression early. Uh, and so there are a couple of plays where we might have had those guys highlighted uh, at different points in the game. And then a couple of those penalties, you know, on who he was the primary target in, in the two-minute drive, you know, with those holding calls where if he wasn't held, he probably gets a target. So... Uh, you know, there's a, a little bit of that to it as well. But I do think there's a, a balance between trying to get everybody going and spreading it out and, you know, sticking with what's working, so to speak. Um, you know, and, and obviously we got Dontrell going a little bit in the red zone and situationally, which may have taken away a couple of targets from those other guys. Getting the defensive holdings and that sort of thing. Is there a, a knack or a trick for guys to be able to get more of those calls, whether it's a defensive hold or a, or a pass interference call? Do some guys have that ability to do that more than others? I think so, yeah. It's just contact, you know, strength through contact and, and play speed. You know, Hoop does a great job of setting up defenders and getting on an edge, and sometimes when they hook him or grab him, you know, he's able to show that he's being restricted, and that kind of uh, movement, you know, lets the official know that there's been some grabbing there. So I do think there's some savviness to that and some football IQ of understanding, hey, I got a guy on a certain leverage. Uh, let's take advantage of it and uh, put him in a tough spot. On the predictability, on the predictability front, uh, l last year, second down, if you got sacked or threw incomplete on first down, you ran 64% of the time. Mm -hmm. Is that a we're going to run no matter what and we're going to make you stop us thing? Or is that a, a stubbornness where you're not using everything that, that's available to you? Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit of both. Um, you know, certainly trying to get ourselves, uh, you know, into a, a little bit better third down situation on those second and longs. Um, and I have a lot of confidence in our run game to be able to be efficient in those uh, in those situations, you know, I wouldn't necessarily categorize 64, 36 as like, you know, stubbornness and just flat out tilting the scales. It's leaning one way, but you're a couple runs, a couple passes here and there from balancing that out. So, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm not too predictable uh, this season. A couple runs from balancing, a couple passes from balancing it out, but you choose not to take those couple passes. Yeah, and I, again, that can be all game situation, you know, and a lot of factors play into that. You did a good job like getting him matched up against linebackers. Like, as a play caller and, and schemer, how do you balance, okay, I have a guy who I just know is going to beat the opposition as opposed to, okay, I got to scheme these guys to, to get open uh, from, from week to week. Yeah, sometimes it's it's two in the same, right? If you're able to create a matchup, you know, with a linebacker and you can consistently get that guy uh, isolated, you know, you, you kind of kill two birds with one stone there. And then sometimes it's about familiarity and giving the quarterback a progression that he's seen a lot of times and then just moving some of the pieces around uh, to build those schemes. So, 
you know, I, I think that uh, Dontrell adds a, a piece there for us that has been fun to watch, you know, throughout training camp kind of grow in that role. Todd, what have you seen Last from Austin Hooper as a blocker, and is that maybe an area where you guys would like to see more from him? Yeah, we're always uh, stressing our guys, you know, to run off the football and, and to be the tip of the spear in the run game uh, from a tight end standpoint. And, you know, I think that that's a, an ever-growing um, kind of challenge for those guys, right, is how much can they give to the pass game uh, and can they equal it in the run game. So we don't want anybody to be one-dimensional. We'll continue to challenge everyone to step up, uh, you know, in both phases. Great. With the yards you guys gave up in the run game last week, are those correctable things when you watch them on film? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was a combination, man. I think uh, a couple tough calls put the guys in some tough situations on a couple of those things. Um, I think the tackling showed up a little bit. You face a elite back. I mean, you're going to have some, but they were able to break some and get some significant yardage on them. Um, and then a few fit things where – an elite back finds it, right? Like, if you don't fit up against the ones that are elite, um, they make you pay for it. So, I mean, combination of things, got to be better. We got to be do a better job setting the edge, building a wall, and, and swarming. But, I mean, there was a few different things that factored into that. Is Zach aggressive enough in this game? Yeah, I felt like he was going. There were some good clips of him knocking guys around. Uh, I mean, they were doing some unique things, bringing the tight end up on them pretty early in the down. Um, in the play, and again, a lot with all these guys, they got a decision to make. At some point in the block, it's either I, I can go under, I can go over, I can go through, and a lot of that depends on where the ball is at, right? So, I mean, there's a time and place um, for making those decisions, and they got to have good instincts and good feels, feel for when they can. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. I think all of us across the board know, knows it has to be better. Challenge, I guess, going up as a quarterback like Buffalo's got with the strong arm and also willingness to, to run it. Yeah, he's a he's a special player. Like we got we got a big challenge ahead of us. Um, he makes that thing go up there. Like he can he can make the throws on schedule, all the throws wherever it is. Um, he can scramble around and buy time and make all the throws. He can scramble around and run and stiff arm two hundred fifty pound dudes to the ground. Um, he's a he's a unique player with a special skill set with a lot of things that you have to be able to de defend with them. The tackling problems have kind of been well documented. With starters playing little to none in the preseason and obviously not taking guys to the ground in practice and all, is some of that rust? And do you have to maybe rethink your approach to the preseason in terms of getting guys on the field to tackle? I think, uh, I mean, we try to rep it. A lot of the a lot of the fundamentals of tackling, I think you can get across without contact. Like we're out here throughout the season, it's the same thing. Like, I mean, you talk about tackling and there might be maybe five to six tackles per guy per game on average, you would say. Um, but I think the the technique and the fundamentals of being able to stay on my feet, not get too wide with my base, where I can step to contact, I'm not hopping, and I'm closing the distance. All those things that really enable you to be a good tackler have nothing to do with the end result of the contact, if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of little things leading up to the junction point where I'm wrapping and collisioning that ultimately lead to whether you make or miss. So, I mean, does it factor? Maybe a little bit. I'm not going to sit here and say yes or no either way, but I do think there's a lot of things we can do without, without the contact that can improve our tackling. With Farley only playing 15 snaps against the Giants, like how has he responded? I mean, obviously, he wants to play more, but how has he responded to that? Yeah, he's been good. I, he's competitive. Um, all these guys are. They all want to be out there every snap, um, unless they're tired, of course, and they're begging, begging to get out. Um, but he, he's responded well. I think he's been ready to go this week. He's excited for the challenge that they present um, and what's going to be asked of him. So, I mean, he's he's been good. I I've, I've felt no negativeness from him this week. What's kind of your talking point with, with Christian on the on the big touchdown play there? And I guess how important is that, especially with guys like Diggs? Uh, yeah, yeah I, th I mean, on the back end, ultimately do your job, right? And that's all 11 guys. They got a job to do on a run play, on a pass play. They all have a job to do. Um, it's our job on those plays to rush and be able to get home to affect the quarterback. And you're not always going to. I mean, Jeff was close. Um, but those guys got to do their job. They can't get lazy. They can't fall asleep on things. and. 
if if you got a job to cover the man, worry about covering the man and not not what's going on with the other ten guys because that's that's your job on that play. Just kind of maybe got caught looking in the back. Yeah, he got caught peeking. I think he got a little lazy with his technique, um, and I started to wonder. Did you did you like rookie uh, Rod McCreary's game? Really? Yeah, I thought he did a good job. I thought he. I thought he did a really good job for the first game going out there and competing and different things that he's been doing for us. Like I thought he went out there and challenged, wasn't at all scared, you know? So I'm, I'm encouraged with him and hopefully it keeps progressing. Yeah, everybody talks about obviously Allen and his receivers. What do you see from their running backs on film? How good are they? Yeah, they're, they're all different, right? They're all different. Um, Singletary Moss, I, I think they both run the ball really hard. Um, I think they've done a good job of introducing some different schemes to kind of help those guys a little bit, a little bit different schematically than what they were last year in the run game. Um, but they do. They're, they're running the ball hard. They're fighting for yards. No different than the quarterback fighting for yards. Um, again, it's going to be a game where we're going to have to be able to set the edge on them, and hopefully we can build a wall where they can't, they can't get that steam going downhill on us. What you guys lose in, in David uh, Anini from the, the practice squad? And maybe also, have you gotten any impressions on Tuska uh, so far? Yeah, I think uh, David did a great job for us in the preseason. Um, the rush ability, um, he was progressing. He was improving every day. I think we we saw that from training camp on through. Um, and Tuska's been good. He's been bought in. He's, he's learning as we go. Um, just like all these guys, they're trying to carve out a role for himself. And, and he's done a good job, everything we've asked him up to this point. What, what is the challenge when they, they have they've used, I think, three different backs uh, on Thursday night? I mean, it, I guess the Giants kind of knew you see a lot of Barkley. What's the challenge when you got so many guys rotating in? Yeah, I think you got to know their skill sets. Um, they're all a little bit different. Um, Singletary to Moss to Cook, right? They're all different in how potentially they could use them because of those skill sets. and. Just like anything else, we we talked a little bit about the DB receiver deal, like knowing who you're lined up against and what they're trying to do and how they run their routes. It's no different with running backs, right? How how patient are they? How impatient are they? How hard are they, are they hitting it? Like there's all these, are they more quick than fast? There's a bunch of different skill sets that come into play. Can they catch out of the backfield? Um, all those things, we got to have a good understanding of who each guy is. Not one, not one play in particular, but do you feel like with the way the first half went that you guys maybe took your foot off the gas a little there in the second half? Just yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I think the uh, the X plays killed us, and it let them back in the game. You know, that's that's the thing. Like, if we don't give up the, the X plays, you got to make them earn it, um, and who knows what happens. But when you get those X plays and they're right back in the game and the momentum starts to swing, it just gets hard. And I think, I think those two plays kind of – demoralized us a little bit more so than us truly just letting our foot off the gas. But again, we battled. Like after those two plays, we battled. We found some stops. And then unfortunately, we weren't, we weren't able to get it done on that last drive there. What did Hooker do really well on the interception there? In the end zone? Yeah, I think he uh, he was in a good position. They tried to run some spot pick deal and rub him. And he was able to play over the top of it. He was in a good spot to where he was able to get his eyes back. If we talk about a man coverage a lot, like we're not really looking for interceptions. We're looking for PBUs and playing through the hands and making sure our eyes are on our man, right? So we're not losing them. Um, but he was in a good spot. I think he was able to get over the top and he was kind of in phase with, with Saquon and he was able to take a peek and then that's when he saw the ball and was able to make it. Thanks, yep. Thank you. Thank you. About some adjustments that, that Randy had made, you know, coming into this year. Did you see anything on the on the one kick that that stood out, or is it just kind of you know? Yeah, uh, you know, we went over it with Randy. Um, I think he just swung through it a little bit too much. We're trying to tell him to be aggressive when he goes and kicks the ball, and uh, it's just unfortunate one of those things that we didn't come up and, and make the kick. But uh, you know, beforehand, we we just have a lot of confidence in, in Randy. Whether it's um, anywhere out on the field right now, he's had a great training cramp. Uh, excuse me, training camp. Uh, and, you know, just he's been doing really well. And so we're going to have a lot of confidence in him um, to make all these kicks. Uh, so when the next time this happens, um, we expect it the ball to go through. A big emphasis at the end of the game there to, to make sure he got on the right hash yeah. and using the timeout sure. and all of that stuff. Is that 
preferable to be in right down the middle? So, yeah, Randy uh, doesn't care where he kicks the ball. Um, he likes to have it on one of the hashes. And going through our data just over training camp and things like that, um, the right hash has been more of a uh, better kick for him. Um, so we felt also with the wind going from a right to left, going that direction of the tunnel, that that hash would be the best thing for him. Um, so, yeah, we're going to look at all the data and see where the wind's at each and every week, and it might change um, from game to game. Um, but we just felt the right hash was going to be a better spot for him on that kick. Does the data say a closer field goal is sure. a higher percentage than sure. a hash mark? Sure, definitely. Field? I mean, obviously it does, but, you know, with, with the time and things like that, you know, uh, the biggest thing is, hey, we want to feel um, a certain hash might be the best kick for Randy, too. But I think if you ask all kickers, too, they'll probably say more yardage. But um, when it comes down to it, us making a 40-yard field goal from a 42 to a 47, well, we got to be able to go and execute everything from our operations to our kick. With that data and knowing that the right hash is where you want to be, is that not something that – you would think would be understood like when that drive starts because apparently there was a timeout that had to be called to you. Yeah, and I got to continue to do a good job communicating that um, because it could change at any point in time, right? Uh, whether it's the wind, uh, whether we're at on a certain uh, spot on the field. Um, you know, I, I got to continue to communicate everything uh, with Todd, with the head coach, because um, again, that part can change at any point in time during the course of the game. Swinging through it is that more of a technique issue where he where his, his left foot maybe is uh, out of place or what maybe contributes? No, it, it would be more of him just trusting his follow through um, with his kick. Um, you know that that's probably one of the bigger things with Randy uh, is really getting his hip through. Um, whether he kicks the ball on the right or the left hash, uh, we want to make sure that you know he's staying aggressive on all of his kicks. I mean, we always heard how good Brett was in that yeah. regard. Has that, that been an adjustment for him at all? Or? Uh, a little bit. Obviously, when you're working with a guy all last year with Brett um, that Randy did last year, it's always an adjustment going in. But uh, Ryan has done a great job for us coming in here, working his butt off as far as uh, holds, because that was a major thing with him. He didn't really hold that much, uh, especially his last couple years there at Colorado State. But he's worked at it. He's out here every single day on the jugs, working with Randy. Um, so we'll continue to work with him um, to get our operation as perfect as we possibly can, because Morgan snaps a great ball for us. The snap and the hold good on that yeah, last kick? Yeah, um, You know, I, I'm, I'm sure there's some things that we can always do better, but uh, we, we thought the operation was pretty clean. Um, you know, and again, we're, we're going to have a, a ton of confidence in Randy making that kick next time. Craig, what are the teaching points for Kyle Phillips in the punt return yeah. game where he has, you know, an electrifying punt to punt return to start the game, but then also has a you know, kind of that, that muffed punt there at the end of the game. Yeah, sure. I think the one thing that we uh, try to really talk to Kyle about is communication um, back there. And you probably don't realize it, but there's a lot of communication that happens uh, back there with Kyle and all returners. Um, we want to do a really good job, especially when a punter punts the ball and gets a lot of hang time, especially, you know, if we're backed up a little bit, where our guys, what we tell Kyle all the time is, they're fighting for you. Like, they want to have a great return. They're going to block as hard as they possibly can for you. Now we've got to do our turn of communicating, and if it's going to be a, a job where we have to fair catch it, we've got to get those other guys out of the way so we can clean up the pitcher for them. Um, we don't want to have four or five guys that are going to be right beside Kyle Phillips when he catches a punt. So he's got to do his job communicating um, and, and talk really loud because those guys are they're doing everything that they can to have another big return. So we'll continue to harp with Kyle about that. Um, and not just saying it one time, but it's got to be three or four times to get those guys out of the way. What's it mean to you to get Joe Jones and Trenton Cannon on the active roster this week and not have to worry about those decisions going forward? Yeah, um, one, I think uh, they've earned that, that opportunity to be on the active squad. Uh, we both feel like they had really good games for us, and they've worked really hard, and uh, I'm excited for them. I know the players are too, so um, you know we'll look – each and every week for those guys to make a big contribution to our special teams. Are you hoping Kyle's healthy enough to play Monday? If not, maybe who's, who, who will you look at to 
So we got a lot of guys back there that's been catching Amani Hooker, Robert Woods, uh, Traylon Burks. Uh, those guys have been doing it during training camp. Uh, and they'll continue to get reps at it um, just in case something happens to Kyle. Stonehouse obviously has a strong leg yeah. and a 50 plus yard punt is nothing for him it seems like. But with that, are you still okay with a 12 to 15 yard return if it's a 40 net? Sure. Um, you know, he had a lot of big punts for us, uh, and we also have to do our job of covering. So we just got to make sure if he's going to hit those deep balls going 66, 70 yards, that there's got to be some hang time with it. Um, you know, I know one of the last ones that he ended up punting, he wants that one back because it wasn't really great direction, but it was still 58 yards. We just got to get a little bit more hang time on it. So anytime he's going to boom the ball like that, we've got to make sure that we get good hang time and then our coverage has to be good. And if they do get 12, 15, 16 yards and we can still net 47 yards, I still think we're doing a pretty good job.